Hi everyone, welcome to our sizzling summer series. I'm Karen, I'm here in my studio at the Potterosa um, from Sew and Save, and this is the third project in our sizzling summer series. And we're making these, they're called um, Watermelon Place, and they're um, little placemats. This is a super fun project, it goes really fast. The girls who um, made them in class last week got them finished all they had to do was hand sew their binding on when they got home and they were finished they had so much fun this is a quilt as you go project so it's fast and easy and we kind of have some of the parts of it pre-cut for you so that even makes it easier so let's get started let me tell you what you need um, to do this project your kit comes with just about everything that you need to do this project except your batting. This is a great way to use up some scrap batting that you might have sitting around and um, you don't need much. So it's a lot of fun. In your kit, you're gonna have, the actually the, kit, the pattern gives you instructions for making three of these placemats. We thought that was a little weird. Either you want two placemats or you want four. Um, not three. So in your kit, you have enough to make two placemats like this, or you can make them into table toppers, whatever works for you. So in your kit, you're going to have um, two of each of the red stripes for the inside of your watermelon. These are going to be a little bit long, even though they're cut to the right width, you're going to want them to cut them down to 12 and a half. So each one of these little strips, you're going to have two of. Okay, I'm not even going to pull them apart, but you're going to have two of each. And there are five different colored strips to go in the center of your watermelon. We're going to start by sewing the stripes onto the watermelon. Then we're going to add the two sides, which are the little green guys. So you will need to cut four short sides for each, for um, the two sets. So you'll need one, two, three, four um, inner borders and then two longer borders for the bottom here and on your other placemat. Then your little watermelon rind stripes, isn't this cute? It is so cute. You are going to have two different stripes. So you can see how one goes horizontal and one of the stripes goes vertically. So you'll cut the two horizontal ones so that you have four, one, two, three, four, for your sides, and then two of the horizontal stripes for your bottom. Okay, you're gonna need that. Then even before you get started, you're going to need your backing because you're gonna do this all together at once. So you're gonna wanna cut your backing down to size. Isn't this so cute? Um, some of, there's different backings in this project. So when you choose your thread, because this is a quilt as you go project, the bobbin thread is gonna show up on your backing. So think about that before you thread up your machine and start stitching. The top, you won't see any of your stitching, but the bottom, you're going to see your stitching on the back because you're quilting as you go. So get something that you like to coordinate with the back of your project. Then you're going to wanna to cut two pieces of batting the same size as your backing and that's all you need to do up oh, and then you're gonna have your board or your binding and you need a little bit more than one one width of fabric to get around your table or your little placemat so I cut my bindings at two and a quarter and I used about even less but less so you're gonna cut three strips because you'll use one and a half strips say to go round okay and then of course you have your cute little seed buttons those are so cute you can either hot glue those on or hand sew them on whatever works best for you but that'll go on last and are you ready let's get started the first thing that you're going to do with your project is attach your backing to your batting. Now they say to use a spray. I don't like to use sprays. Sprays are hard to control and it's not good for the air. And especially in class, a lot of people are very sensitive to sprays. So I try not to use a spray. What I've done is I have my backing and my batting cut to size. 
I'm going to use bone ash. Bone ash is a fabulous project. You can put in a little, you can put on a lot, and what it will do, it will fuse your batting to your backing. So I just sprinkle it on. It's very, I don't know if you can even see it, but it's just like very, very fine salt almost. So I'm just putting a little salt on my batting and I just get it all the way around. You don't even have to get it way out to the edges because a lot of times when you're trying to sprinkle it to the edge, you'll end up getting it on your um, pressing mat. And a lot of times I don't want to do that. So um, just get some on there. All it's doing is holding these two together while you're doing your quilt as you go stitching. So I'm going to do that. Now, a lot of people have some, oh, they don't have, a lot of people don't have problems, but occasionally someone will have a problem with this because they don't press it correctly. So I've sprinkled on the bone ash. I've now laid my fabric over the top. You could also use a, um, a fusible batting. I don't really like fusible batting. It just feels too stiff to me. And then if you fold your project, that crease has a tendency to stay in and doesn't want to come out. This is just light. It holds everything in place until you, as, as long as you need it to as you're quilting. So now that I've done that, I'm just going to start and I'm going to start in the center of my project and I'm not going to iron back and forth. I'm just going to go and work towards the outside. And I don't have enough cord here. Here we go. <laughs> kind of move my pressing area over here so that I can get this all pressed up nice. And this is really all you have to do with just a little bit steam, no steam. It works either way. And we're just going to press that on. And that's all there is to it. It is now stuck. I can just kind of hold on to this edge and you can see how it's stuck on there. That easy. So, and all that stuff didn't get sprayed in the air and now I'm good to go. Now I'm going to start laying my little red pieces down onto um, my backing or my batting to start to stitch the center of my watermelon. The first thing I'm going to do is find the center of this piece of batting and backing. Now you could measure it out if you want. The easiest way is just to kind of lay these two together, give it a little crease. Got a little stuff on there. There we go. Give it a little crease. Now I can see where my center mark is. Now you're going to want to watch on this piece of fabric because there, this is directional. You do have a top and bottom. So I want to make sure that I start, I'm going to start at the top of my um, fabric. Then I'm going to take my ruler and I'm just going to line up on my creative grid ruler the half inch mark. And it's really easy to find that half inch mark because it has that non-stick backing right behind the half inch mark. I'm going to lay the half inch mark right along the top of my batting and backing piece. Take a Frixion pen and make a mark. So you have a nice straight mark along the top. Just like this. Okay, so now I know I have a nice straight mark where I'm going to lay those red pieces to stitch them down. Okay, let's get these guys out of the way. We don't need those anymore. That's all you need to do. Now I'm going to start with my first piece of red watermelon fabric. I'm going to fold it in half and put a little tick mark. Just kind of fold mark with my fingers. This piece is going to lay face up so that it's facing you. My little fold mark is going to line up with that fold mark that I made in the center of my little placemat. I'm going to line it up right on that line that I drew. And then I'm going to take the next piece of red fabric and I'm going to lay it right on top of that. But this time I'm going to lay it right side down. So the wrong side is facing up. Now in the instructions, it kind of tells you that you can stitch along this piece first, this edge first. I kind of don't do that because I don't want things to kind of move around as I go along. You could at this point in time pin it if you'd like to. Um, I didn't do that. It really doesn't move much. If you'd like, you could use your walking foot to stitch on this. Um, but I didn't do that either. This is a pretty thin batting. It's a battleizer and I use battleizer for, it's a, actually a battleizing, bat, batting and stabilizer 
all in one. And I really like this for table toppers and table runners and things like that. So now I'm going to start at a quarter of an inch down here. Don't sew up at the top because you're going to be, a couple ladies did that and they had to rip it out. So don't stitch across the top. You're going to stitch across the bottom here, a quarter of an inch from the edge. I didn't back stitch because you're going to come and you're going to cover that edge of stitching with another line of stitching when you sew that inside rind on. So look at, we've got two strips on already. It's that fast. I'm going to stop. Now I'm going to go over to the ironing board and I'm going to press this down nice and flat. I like to stop and press as opposed to just kind of finger pressing because I want this to be nice and flat and look really nice as I go along. I think the instructions said that you could mark um, that first line with a, with a, um, with a pen. Um, I don't like to use a pen or a pencil, a ball point, ball point pen, any one of those things whenever when I'm sewing because you never know when that's going to bleed through. You could wash this one day and that pen mark could just bleed right through. You could even be steaming that with your iron and the moisture from your iron can make that pen bleed. So I always like to use the Frixion pen, um, some other fabric safe marker to mark on my fabric. The next thing I'm going to do, now that I've pressed that nice and flat, I'm going to add my next piece of watermelon stripe. Again, that's going to be face down, so it's wrong, right side down and right matching up with the last um, piece of fabric that I just pressed down. I'm going to stitch that at a quarter of an inch and off we go. We are going to continue to do this with all of the watermelon stripes. Now I have all of my watermelon stripes stitched and flipped and pressed. And I'm ready to start the rind. Now you can see by looking at mine that I didn't get all of those red stripes perfectly even. And that's going to happen and it's okay. Before I add my side stripes, which are going to be right here and over here, I'm going to draw a line and get a nice straight line before I get started. So I'm going to go back up to the top of my batting and I'm going to draw a straight line and that straight line is going to tell me where I'm going to put the edge of my rind fabric. I'm going to do exactly the same thing that I did with the red stripes and I'm going to stitch and flip, stitch, flip, and press. So I've got these going right here. So now I know I have a nice straight line so that my little um, rind pieces will go straight when I sew them on. And it's okay if it gets a, if it's a little bit long on the bottom. You can either trim that now or trim it later. Doesn't matter. I would start at the top and stitch and stop at the bottom of my red so that I can trim that little extra green off when I'm done. Again, I've laid it right side down and I'm going to do that on both sides, stitch, flip, and then trim off that little excess. So let's do that. We're going to take our bottom stripe of the green and we're going to lay that all the way across the bottom and stitch that on. Stitch, flip, and press. Now it's time to add the rind. I know this is going really fast, isn't it? You're going to do the two sides first. So I lay my two sides down, right sides down, and right side down and stitch all the way down just like you did before. Stitch, flip, press. Now it's time to add the bottom rind, our last piece. Can you believe it? It went that fast. I know, it's so fun. 
you will have this done in no time. I kind of left my long strips on. You can leave them on or trim them off, just like I said. Right side down, stitch, flip, and press. Then I'm going to show you how to trim off your edges, trim it all down, trim up your edges, and you will have a placemat done. Isn't that amazing? So if you haven't purchased one of these kits from us, um, we still have kits available, and we also have kits um, of just the fabric. I know so many people have bought the kit with the pattern and you don't want to buy another pattern. So we have kits with just the fabric and the pattern is taken out. And um, that way you don't have to pay for another pattern. I'm going to trim off my, just because I can, I'm going to turn off, trim off that little extra green. It doesn't really matter. I'm just being fussy. Well, you don't have to be fussy. You can leave it there. Nobody would know it's under there but you. But so I just kind of want to take that off. All righty. Let's press this up. Wasn't that fun? I loved this project. Okay. Ta-da! All right, now we're ready to square this up and trim up the edges. I wanted to show you my project from the back side because we talked about um, the thread color to use and I kind of wanted to tell you what I used and I used um, a white thread on the back of this and I want to show it to you because we're going to come in on it and you will be able, you can't even see the stitching on here hardly and the color seems to just blend right in. And what I used was one of our Wonderfill Decabove bobbins. These are polyester threads. It's an 80 weight, so it's a thinner thread, but because it's polyester, it's very strong. So the bobbin is pre-wound for you. You don't even have to wind it. And because it's an 80 weight, you get a lot more thread on your bobbin. So your bobbins last longer. That's a great thing. And you can see that on the back of this, it didn't even show. It doesn't even look white. It kind of picks up the color of that bluish background. So it was perfect. I didn't even have to change my bobbin. So I use this in my bobbin all the time. And then I use our nice Aurafil threads on the top. The other reason why a polyester thread is good in your bobbin is because a cotton thread will create more lint as you stitch and a polyester thread will not. So you won't get so much lint in your bobbin case and have to get it cleaned as often. So that's what I used, our wonderful bobbins weight, and this was, was perfect. Now I'm ready to flip this over and we're gonna trim this down and make it look like the watermelon. For this project, I'm going to use our new ruler. Um, the, if you remember, we had the new Big Easy and it's a fabulous 12 and a half by 24 and a half inch ruler. And um, we did a combo with the purple handle because it's kind of big and heavy. This is a fabulous ruler. If you haven't tried it, stop in the store. We have them at the store and you can try it before you buy it. And I think you'll be sold. But they now have the Big Easy Junior and it is the perfect size for a project like this. It's a little bit smaller. It's 12 and a half by 18 and a half. And I put a purple grippy on this too because I really like it, even though it's not as heavy as the other one. So you really could use this ruler without the grippy. I kind of like the grippy. And of course, I'm too lazy to take the grippy off of this one and put it on the other one and keep flipping back and forth. When I want to measure something, I just want to grab, measure it, trim it, and go. Um, even though it doesn't take long to take this off and put it on another one. I don't want to take that time all the time. So of course I had to buy another purple grippy, but that's okay because these are fabulous and they work great. So the first thing I'm going to do is use my little, use my um, ruler and we'll come over here. I start and I kind of use, to square things up, I kind of use my borders as my lining up section so that I kind of get them straight because maybe you sewed a little crooked or things moved a little bit on your batting and that's okay. So I use my border kind of as my guide to straighten things out. So I'm gonna do that. 
I'm going to cut this short end first. Here's my cutter. And you can see, see, I've got it a little bit over here, so I'm going to be trimming off the extra green that's on here. I'm just going to double check one more time before I cut. So I have a line going straight along my border here and straight up the side here. And I'm going to trim that off. Now I've got one nice square edge. I'm going to come across the top and I'm going to flip this, even though it doesn't all fit on my table. Here we go. I'll go, kind of go sideways. There we go. That'll be easy enough. So I'm going to use the bottom, this edge that I just trimmed as a guide and come across the top. And you can see I was a little crooked on my top too. So we're going to just straighten that out a little bit. And off we go. All righty. So I'm going to trim off the top. Now I have a nice right angle. I'm going to use that right angle to trim off the other side. So I will you line it line up the short edge with, with the line and this longer line, the longer edge with the line. And I'm going to come over just a little bit more because I can and get it nice and square and straight. It's always a little bit tricky when you're trying to line something up. You're always a little bit afraid to cut and what not to cut and where to line it up. So I thought I would help you out with that. And I think I can come right straight along here and trim off the bottom. There we go. Ta-da! It is fabulous. It's beautiful. Now we want to make our little table topper look like a watermelon. So we want to kind of dog ear these corners. And what you're going to do, I grab my two inch, two and a half inch ruler because we're going to measure up two and a half inches and put a little tick mark. So I kind of lay this in the corner. Here's two inches and two inches and I would have put a little mark here and a little mark here and do the same over on this side. I will put a little mark here at two inches and a mark here at two inches. Okay. I will take a shorter ruler, this guy over here, and now I'm going to line up my ruler on those two little tick marks and trim that right off. Just like that. It's that easy. Line my ruler up with the two little tick marks over here. Trim it right off. Oop, didn't get all the way through there. There we go. Ta-da! Now you are ready to add your binding and put on your seeds and you are all done. Wasn't that fast and fun? If you want more kits, there are more kits available. And don't forget to join us next time when we're going to be making the little um, Nantucket pouches. They're those cute little zipper pouches and with the little charms on them. So that's our next project in a couple of weeks. So be sure to join us for that and have fun. If you have any questions, you know how to get in touch with us. See you soon. Bye.